Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. So, how'd you like to be indoors and out of doors all at once? Well, let me introduce you to the Solar Gazebo. The Gazebo! <laughs> this is a pretty cool project I'm doing with my parents. Got it started, my, my dad designed it. It's gonna be a gazebo with solar panels. It's pretty simple, not really. But so, you've got it kind of started here already. These boxes right here and here, there are two more up here we can't see. These are gonna be sunk into the ground, filled with concrete. Gazebo will be built on top of it. That'll be a, a steel welded truss with solar panels. So we already have solar panels on the house that my parents put up in 2003. And this solar gazebo will double our electricity output at half the cost per panel and half the number of panels, roughly. Let's get started. Okay, so we have this deck. Part of it's now been ripped up to make room for the gazebo. There'll be decking extended all the way once it's done. Now we just need to sink these boxes down. So working on the holes right now sink the concrete in. Only problem is once you get down about that far in the ground of my house, you get to this solid clay stuff. So it makes it very hard to dig. So got our new tool, this little jackhammer. Make it a little easier. Still really hard. I've been working on this hole for a while. So at this point in the video, uh, I'm under self-quarantine. So I'm going to get as much of this as we can done. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get parts inspected. So we may not be able to buy concrete at the moment. So who knows how long this will take now. Needs to go a little bit deeper. And then still need to do the three holes there. Footage of making these because my dad was actually the one who made them. But this is a part that's going to go into the concrete. So concrete will come up to about here. And then the, the posts will be in here. I do not know what these are called. But you can buy them for about $50 each. So we just made them. Just got some two inch plate steel, cut it, welded it together, drilled some holes. Can't have been more than 20, 30 bucks for all of them. And then they've also been painted with Rust-Oleum paint, so they won't rust. So it's been about two weeks since the last clip. We now have all four holes dug and put these boxes in them. They're lined up. We just need to get them inspected and weld up some rebar for the insides. And the reason it took so long is this is the stuff you're trying to dig through, the jackhammer. So the next step is to get these inspected. Hopefully we will be able to get them inspected by uh, taking pictures of something since we're still in lockdown. So hopefully that'll happen soon. I'm gonna be welding up the rebar tomorrow and we'll see what happens. Welded up these rebar squares with posts on them that are gonna go inside the concrete. I just tacked them together with a welder since I have a welder. And yeah, what they're gonna do, like I said, on the bottom of the holes like that, we're almost ready to pour concrete. Also, we got these bracket things I showed you. We got those mounted up and squared in all the holes. Got the pup here. It's a great day in quarantine. Hopefully we can get these things inspected by taking pictures of them or something, sending them in. Got the concrete started, fixing it up. piece of trash like a sprinkler head that's broken and you don't know what to do with it just toss it in the concrete bury it it'll never be seen again <laughs> garbage the dog did step in it so there's a pop print now but it's looking good let that cure for a few days now we just got to do the others and we've got a whole bunch of concrete footing number two done and yes, it's supposed to be that off-center. The hole wasn't quite in line with that one. Uh, nozzle breaks halfway through your project. You just drop it in the concrete. And just bury it in there. It'll never be seen again. Now we've got the third hole filled with concrete. And for this last one right here in the front, we're going to be doing something different. We've got the pup here to help. And so we've ripped up this part of the deck right here because we're going to be putting this conduit in here. So the conduit's gonna run from the house under the deck 
and then it's going to go into the concrete and come up right next to the post. That way we can get the wires from the solar panels that will come down the post and be nicely hidden and run under the deck. We've got this the last uh, one poured. So we've got all four poured now. This one's special because it's got the conduit in it. So it runs here and it's going to run under the deck. It ends there now. But so the wires are going to come down from the solar panels through here. This pipe runs through the concrete so it'll be nice and hidden and go under. And we all find it and currently drilling massive bolt holes with this big drill press. Okay, sorry about the wind noise, but we have finally got all of the footings in. Concrete is set, and it is finally time to stop building down and start building up. I didn't get any footage of this because it was boring, but we have now cut these braces, drilled these weird holes, got the uprights in, all the parts are cut, drilled, and ready to assemble. All right, so we finally got all the footings in. It took a while. I've grown a beard to show that time has passed. I've now used that joke twice in two videos. We'll see which one comes out first. We've got all the wood here, all cut and drilled. It's time to start building up. Cue the time lapse. <laughs> in one day you can see each side has a double thing this thing's not going anywhere super sturdy now it's time to get the struts on for the solar panels to start welding tomorrow and by the way if you caught that yes my neighbor's house did catch on fire and i did get pictures of it yeah that was that was a fun day okay, so now that the wood is done it's time to just welding i got my iron mill welding mask here um so basically, we could just put solar panels on top of this right now, and it would work. But because the earth is round, sorry flat earthers, it's true, uh, the sun is not straight overhead unless you're on the equator. So because up here in the northern hemisphere, the sun is angled south. So if we take the panels and angle them up and south, they get more direct sunlight and therefore are more efficient, create more power, and make more money because our power company is required to pay us if we make more than we use. Just finished welding the first of the steel trusses. It's one square tube. I've got to weld five of these. It's a pretty simple welding job to do. Just a bunch of straight welds. It's pretty easy to clamp. But I would suggest not welding outside in 70 degree weather. It's not the most comfortable. So now I've got all the struts welded up. Now we're adding these brackets. There are three different kinds of brackets depending on where they go. These are the outside. Weld these on, this is gonna bolt onto the posts. And we're grinding them down to get paint. And these, to get these on, basically stuck these on the wood and then put the thing up there, clamped it, welded it up there on the gazebo. I had to get into some weird positions on some of them, but it was fun welding. So we've got these presses now fully welded, painted, ground, they're ready to go. All we gotta do now is bolt them up on top and then put the rest of the infrastructure up there for the solar panels. All right, so we got the trusses up. So next we're gonna be putting basically an X on the back for extra support. The ones on the sides are pretty well supported, but the ones in the middle, you can see it's only connected to the sides. So that'll get a little extra support. And then we'll be putting the attach points on the top and these uh, pieces go across to attach the solar panels. So at the moment we're bolting on this aluminum bar. You can see all the, the brackets. These will go across and then the solar panels are gonna be mounted directly to this part. And we've also got down here, paint's drying on these. These are bars that'll cross an X in the back. Got these trusses up now. We're gonna put on the X now with these. It's just a little extra support. It's not really necessary, but we like to over-engineer. And eventually these will be trimmed off. It's all up, got the X in the back. Next to solar panels. So some of you gazebo aficionados may have noticed that this is not a gazebo, despite what the title says. This is in fact a pergola. However, gazebo is more fun to say. And if you call it a pergola, you can't make constant references to John Mulaney. The gazebo! 
Uh, if you haven't seen the John Mulaney gazebo bit, go watch that after this video. And then come back and watch the rest of my videos. It's a good. Quick explanation for those who don't know, in the John Mulaney bit, he's talking about a gazebo that was built in the middle of the Civil War, how strange that was. There was a plaque on the gazebo, and it said, this gazebo was built by the town in 1863. That's in the middle of the Civil War. <laughs> and they built a gazebo. So here we got a gazebo being built in the middle of the global pandemic. There will be a plaque that I'll be making later in the video. So therefore, gazebo, not pergola. Even though technically it is a pergola. The gazebo! Now we've got these struts up here. We're gonna trim them in a little bit. But next, solar panels. So we get the panels up there. up underneath each panel has its own transformer which is a new way of doing it our old panels have a, one big transformer sorry about the noise this construction over there but now we just got to wire this thing up so wire it all up wire is going to come down here into this pipe that's embedded in the concrete under the deck and we will be replacing this deck because it's a little warped now it's been here for 20 years and it'll run down the house and plug in all right so the wires come up in here feed down we got the first piece of tubing in and they just thread through here there's going to be a metering boxes and everything. I'll explain it all more once everything's put together. But the condo is just going to go up, turn here, and go straight down the house. And we've painted it white just so it's a little less visible. Ground wire, if you were wondering. We just had not unrolled it yet. Okay, we've got it going pretty far. Just drilling it in here. Now we've got the rails trimmed. And put the little plastic end caps on. All right, so this thing is pretty much done now. We finished the wiring up. There's a few more little things to do. We did most of the wiring off camera but I'll quickly run you through what the wiring looks like right now. If you look underneath the panels, each panel has its own inverter. That's what those little boxes are. And the cables come off to each inverter. All the inverters are all tied together in two groups and come down here. One of the wires comes down here, goes into this box and down here into the, this circuit breaker box. The other one comes here, goes down the same way into the circuit breaker box. Right, inside the box, this looks like that. We got circuit breakers for the panels. See, they're actually on. We are making power at the moment. And we've got a ground line going up there too. Then these come out here. So the power comes out of the box, runs down this pipe. I do need to finish painting it right there. We've got it painted black. It goes down into the concrete, runs under the deck. This deck will be replaced. And this box right here is, so we're actually, gonna, it's not done yet, but these wires here are gonna be running power into the gazebo because we'll probably be building some kind of bar dining area out here once the deck's done. So anyway, that power comes in there to run through the same pipe. And then this conduit runs down here, runs underneath the door, then up the wall, and it runs down the entire side of the house, nicely under the gutter, runs all the way down here. This run passes through the box just to go through so we didn't have to drill a new hole. This switch does not power them. It's a cutoff for the panels that are on the roof that we got about 15 years ago. So it's a little hard to see over here because we got some burned out lights in the shop. But the, on the other side of this box, we got this meter and the wires come through here, run through here and up to the monitoring box. And so we can wirelessly see on a computer, it's hooked up to this, this router, and we can see how much power each individual panel is making. Over here, if you're interested, these inverters power the older panels. Right here, you can see, because each panel has its own inverter, we can see exactly how much each panel is making. And we've got totals here. So since it's been turned on, we've made 264.38 kilowatt hours. And today so far, we've made 4.32 kilowatt hours. And this is not including the solar we already have on the house. Now that the gazebo itself is done and making power, it is time to finish it off with a little detail, joke, reference, whatever. I've mentioned it many times now. Uh, I've been filming this video for so long I've forgotten exactly what I've said. But I am making this gazebo into a reference to John Mulaney, his stand-up bit about a gazebo that was built in the middle of the Civil War and had a plaque on it. So I'm gonna make a plaque for this gazebo. So generally the plaques would be made out of metal and technically I could do that if we weren't in quarantine. I could go into my school and use the CNC machine, but I can't do that right now. So what I, my idea instead 
is this is a piece of the six of uh, the six by six used for the uprights on the gazebo that was left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop the face off of this, do like a maybe a half inch, sand it down, and then I'll stick it in my Glowforge laser cutter and engrave the uh, plaque writing on it. I haven't exactly decided on the wording yet, but so. Hopefully this will work. I'm going to try just ripping it on the table saw. Six by eight ish black and I'm going to not sand it so that this texture already matches the gazebo so it'll blend in nicely since I did have to cut the top and the bottom. Those will over time they'll blend in with the color so it won't change much. I do need to flatten the back a little bit just because the saw didn't cut it quite flat but I'm just going to use my hand plane for that. But definitely not my best planing job. I think the blade is a little dull. But it's pretty flat now. Let's head to the laser. All right, so I'm gonna take this, just drop it in here, head to the computer, do the design. Just so you know, if you use the link in the top of the description, you can get up to $500 off one of these lasers. They're one of the most affordable lasers out there. Very high quality. It is highly recommend it. Up to $500 off, depending on what model you get. Check it out. One of the great things about Glowforge is that the software is online which means that it's constantly being updated and you don't have to install anything, just sometimes you log on and there's new stuff. So recently they added a text feature. So now you can just put text directly in on the Glowforge software. You don't have to import it in or anything, tons and tons of fonts. So I'm gonna do that. This is my first time actually using this feature. In the John Mulaney bit, the words on the plaque are this. There was a plaque on the gazebo and it said this gazebo was built by the town in 1863. So using the new beta text tool in the Glowforge software, I've made this. And if you're curious, these are my settings. So now I just got to engrave it. So the great thing about Glowforge is how easy it is to use. You just stick your material in, close the lid, put you guys down right here. Then you just push the button, open it up, and you get a plaque. It came out pretty good. It's a little off center actually. Uh, I could trim this, but then it wouldn't be the same size as the pillar and I'd have one less weathered edge. I already have to weather these top edges. So I'm just gonna trim off the bottom here on the table saw and then find a way to mount it. Okay, there we go. Got a completed plaque. It's not perfect, but it's really just there for the joke. All right, so I got it pre-drilled so I don't split the wood and I got these brass screws go. Black is complete. So John Mulaney, I see your gazebo built in the middle of the Civil War and I raise you a solar gazebo built in 2020. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps out a lot. If you'd like to see more projects and maybe some updates to this, please subscribe. Also, some of my merch is now coming back after it was taken off, uh, off Amazon because of everything going on. Uh, but it's coming back, some of it's already back, like my Easily Distracted by Airplanes merch, which is my favorite. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this solar gazebo build. About doubled our solar production. So it's good for the environment, looks cool, and is useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. How'd you like to be indoors and out of doors all at once? <laughs> Ever walking through the park with your betrothed and it starts to rain, but you still want to hold hands? Well, may I introduce you to, and my condolences again to everyone, the gazebo!